really happy to be able to give you this uh, interview. Jamie Oliver sorted it out for me. Thank you so much, Jamie. Here's Charlie Harper. Are you ready? Charlie Harper, what can I say? Thank you so much for being on um, London Lens TV. So many people have just spoken to so many people, and it was a challenge coming up with some decent questions, but I do my best. Um, so, uh, there isn't a punk, I don't think there can be a punk in the world who hasn't heard of UK subs and hasn't heard of you. Um, well, if they're very young, maybe, or if they're. Yeah, tell you, tell you <laughs> a great thing where, you know, no matter what show we do, Someone introduces their daughter, and, and they go, you know, she's never heard of you. I brought her along, and luckily they go away happy, you know. And, and um, yeah, all the time, and um, yeah, they go to countries, and I, I, I really dig not getting recognised actually. Yeah. You know? And there's a kind of story when I had like dark hair, and I was in Poland, and. and you know, it was the first time over there, so no one really recognised you. And then, you know, we'd done big shows in Poland, and then when we came back there, I had dreadlocks growing my hair, and I had dreadlocks, and then no one recognised me. And then, you know, again, the dreadlocks came off, and I had spiky blonde hair, and then, you know, so it was good. I like being incognito, you know, not like. So when was that that you had dreadlocks? Um, from 84, um, yeah, I think I started growing them at 84 for about 10 years. Yeah. So and, uh, in your raster days, when you... Yeah, you know, you know I lived in Brixton. Yeah, right? yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, and I used to be called the multicolour raster. <laughs> Here comes a multicolour raster man. They were great days, the, the 80s in Brixton. The first gig I ever went to actually was Sunsplash in Brixton. I must have been about seven years old and As Aswad was playing. Remember Aswad? Yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Of course, I'm Got sure a story it's about Aswad, right? They went, they, they were meant to go to America on their first police tour. You know, the police got some of you. you know. yeah. And um, Aswad's City Billies took loads of ganja into America, where America's got much more ganja than we have, you know. I don't know. And they, in, in England, we put a little bit on the tobacco and rolled it up. In America, it's just dope rolled up, you know. And it's a, anyway, they, they got busted bringing dope into America. So they never got in. So they had, you know, who can we get? And we just happened to be, oh no, we didn't happen. We were actually touring America and they said, look, could you come over a few days earlier and like do some of our tour? And, and oh, yeah. yeah, so we got on planes of thousands in America rather than a couple of hundreds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 50 people in Acton up the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, wicked, wicked story, man. Um, so, so, yeah, you're always... You, you get recognised all the time, you know, especially especially in London and when you're at festivals. We play a lot of festivals, so you're always walking through. You always go and watch the other, a lot of other bands. Um, you're notorious for it. Um, but what's the weirdest question you've ever been asked? Um, well, the one I was asked kind of, well, quite a, a year ago, I think, is when we went, like, tomorrow we go to France. And um, we try and arrange it, we can't always do this, but we try and arrange it that we just go to France and we don't have far to travel to the gig in case we're late. So we, um, we got this gig in Rouen, which I don't know if you know, that's where they burnt Joan of Arc. Okay. You know, so it's very Did historical. You know She's into history. <laughs> yeah. But look up Joan of Arc, it's really interesting, her whole story. You'll love it, it's really interesting. You know, um, so anyway, uh, so we were excited when to anyway, and the gig was amazing, but it had a radio station there, <laughs> and this woman, first question was, um, do you think hip hop is bigger than punk rock now? And I said, I'm not really puzzled, I don't did you think up your question yourself? And you just, you just no, I didn't actually. I said, I said well, uh, of course it's bigger than punk rock. You know, hip hop's like mainstream, punk rock's underground, hip hop's kind of commercial music, punk rock's non-commercial music. 
it's like and it went on and on and yeah. sang about sang about Sainsbury's and the fruit store on the corner, you know, like it's yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, like comparing apples and pears. I thought that was a kind of weird question, you know. Like, yeah. Not that I got any. It's funny because they were playing hip hop in the radio station, you know, it's, it, at the gig, you could hear it. And, um, and they played like uh, this girl, a, a girl hip hop artist playing something, and it was really good. Yeah. Some of it's great. Um, I suppose punk almost crosses over because um, you heard of Ice T. Yeah. Uh, Oh, every punk. Yeah, body well, count. And, yeah. Right. What's the weirdest gig you've ever done? Weirdest gig. Weirdest gig. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a good question. Um, I think it was um, at one o'clock in the afternoon in Stockholm, where because um, I think they needed the gig in the evening. They had to change it up because we were flying. Home. That was the end of the tour, so we were flying home, and we had to play in front of very young school children. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Did you play Stranglehold? Kind of very <laughs> um, kind of sterile room with just like chairs like these, you know, like, yeah. um, you know, and that like, everyone sitting down. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was even weirder, and more weird than a prison gig in Argentina. That oh, was a weird one. I bet. And it scared the life out of the band. I was okay with it. You know, I went down, meet, yeah. met the prisoners, you know, like, would you like to meet? Yeah, okay. So I went down, shook hands with them, and, you know, but they, they all, well, a couple of them wanted my rings. Yeah, I bet. Oh, wicked. So you played in prison in Argentina. How long did you, how long was the set? Well, we were supporting, so we did only play for about half an hour. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the, uh, another weird thing about it was we went down. I didn't think we were going down at all because they couldn't cheer or anything. They just had to clap politely because there was around on the prison roofs. There, there were guard, guards with machine guns all pointed at the crowd in case there was a riot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and I, I thought, well, we're not going down well, but, and then at the end of the gig, when the headline band was a kind of rock, a long rock band finished, the, the, you know, like the head of the prison came up uh, to me and said, uh, they want you on again. I said, no, 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 you can't want us on again. And I said, it's not. Yeah. It's not polite for a support band to come on and do an encore yeah. after the, you know, <laughs> I, I, did, I, I wouldn't do it, you know, so, um, yeah, it was really weird, yeah, very it weird. Sounds it, yeah, wow. Yeah. So that's, yeah, two weird ones. There's probably a lot more, but they're the ones I stick in my mind. Yeah. And how, um, and at two ends of the scale? Very sterile. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Completely yeah, exactly, opposite. Yeah. Wow. So, how do you keep it fresh for the fans who, so you've got, you've got people who come and see you like almost every gig if they could, so how do you keep it fresh for those people who come gig after gig Yeah, after we have gig? to think about that, yeah, we have to try and subtly change it every, every night a little yeah. bit, yeah, yeah, subtly, and then, yeah. but the other night we changed the whole damn set and we, we, we're doing the first album. Amazing. Um, I wanted to do this five years ago, but the band goes, no, you know, you don't want to do it. And then everyone started doing it. Right. So, you know, oh, you know. Uh, but then I was reminded that it's 40 years since our first album. Yeah. This is a year to do it. Yeah. Because I've always wanted to do it. It's just fun. And last night when we got it right, you should see the faces of the audience. They were absolutely lovely. Amazing. Yeah. Where was it? Um, Stafford. Stafford, right. In Staffordshire. We played in this place called Red Rum, all painted red, okay? Red and black. Well, it was meant to be oak panning, but so this place was five, six hundred years old. And Queen Elizabeth the first. And as the guitarist was tuning his guitar in the middle of the set, I, I told the audience that I said, Queen Elizabeth the first slept here one night on her way to the castle, and uh, yeah, and they were yeah, I know, I was I was there, <laughs> <laughs> and I pulled the house down. <laughs> <laughs> She's a big Queen Elizabeth fan. Um, 
fan. Oh, the, the first, the first. She's, yeah, 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 she's yeah, yeah. really into the tunes. Yeah. She knows all about it, yeah. But you have to go there and visit. No, no, I'll bring you, I've got the brochure. I'll, I'll give it oh, to you. you. Yeah, yeah, no one, no one knows. Stafford, this little inn, well, it's an inn now, like, uh, uh, it was, I think it was the bishop of the, 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 the areas, like, that's how she, because you imagine, Queen of the, you know, she has about 100 people following her, just for her, servants for her, let alone, the, you know, she'd yeah. take an army with her, you know, so um, it's quite, like the ground of this place was a bit about as big as this space. The cover is three foot, three stories up, the boots upstairs. And, um, but there you go, yeah, a bit of history. I'll remind me to give you the brochure. Thank you. And Stafford, so good old Stafford. So they had, Stafford had a treat last night. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a um, good night, great night. So you just put out a, limit, a limited edition EP, Screaming Ceno. Is it, is it limited edition? Yeah. Can you tell me a bit about that? Because it was, it's kind of a fan only. The main kind of thing, uh, isn't it? Is it kind um, of all that's bollocks. Okay. It really, I, I can't, you know, we got it, we can't sell it. Oh. You know, <laughs> um, until all the people who actually wrote in, you have to ask Jamie about it. Right, but the thing is, it would have done, been all right hadn't, you know, um, the, the um, pressing in Poland had done them in time yeah. because someone was telling us that it's only like Poland and Czech Republic that they got a few of these old record pressing plants. Everyone else melted theirs down and just Poland and Czech were there. So every, you know, I, 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 I pressed one of my own records. And I um, thought, oh, you know, it's a London company, that'd be the right press in London, that'd be good and quick. No, it was done in, sent out to Poland. And then the record jumped. So, as a, and it took from the start sending out to them to getting the actual records back seven months. So, this is what, you know, he got content with. And Jamie had the same, not so quite three months or something. But yeah, so um, until all these people have got the signed ones with bells and whistles on, he can't sell them to the fans. Okay. The real fans who come to the bloody show. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. you know, it's all us up. Not the, um, not the armchair fans. So anyway, we're not going to go down that road anymore. All right, anymore. cool. Yeah. I'll cut that bit. <laughs> As I say, bollocks. Edit, yeah. I'm glad you, because, you know, people need to know about that. Yeah. And other bands need to know about that. And they're doing the same thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, nice one. And it's because it rose out the record company, your own record company, and, you know, you get all the dough. But, you know, kind of, it's not worth it. Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> cheers, cheers for uh, highlighting that.